Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video, and I know this is a little bit different than what you usually see from me, which usually involves, you know, photography and my camera and myself being in the video. This one's just a uh, screen capture, and I do apologize for the kind of uh, weird setup here. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, it's kind of cut off down here, and uh, that cut off down there, uh, there you can see it cutting off this PC, this little window here. Uh, that cut off down there is just because I am on an ultra wide monitor and I'm recording at 1080p for uploading this to YouTube, so I'll keep everything in the center frame here though so just ignore that kind of weirdness all right so uh in this video i'm going to be talking to you guys about my video editing workflow as well as this is kind of a tutorial and recommendation video for what i think you should do for the ideal adobe premiere pro editing workflow on a fairly high-end system there's a slight difference in terms of this workflow if you're running on something that's fairly low end i'm talking like uh, below a you know quad core hyper threaded i7 or something like that if you're or if you're running on a laptop there are things you can do to drastically increase uh, the editing performance on something that's lower end I'm currently running and just so you guys are aware of my specs so people that are watching this that maybe don't follow the channel directly I'm currently running this on a system with 32 gigs of RAM a 16 core 32 thread AMD 1950x uh, thread ripper processor uh, as well as a high-end motherboard several hard drives and SSDs and stuff like that so I want to make that clear first is uh, you don't need something this powerful for doing this editing workflow but it is a more powerful power oriented editing workflow to get you higher quality footage for playback and the like. So the first thing I want to start with is talking about the applications that you will need installed to do this the way that I do it at least. There are a few things that aren't required, but uh, the first thing, first two things that are absolutely required for doing this editing workflow is Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Media Encoder. Now, assuming you have the Adobe Creative Suite, then you should be totally fine because you're going to be using, you know, you have both of those anyway. But uh, those are the two applications that you'll need installed to do this workflow. And then another application I highly recommend is this application here called Post Haste. Here, let me pull it up so you guys can see it. Post Haste, which is this here. And uh, this application right here allows you to do like uh, presets and stuff like that in terms of uh, doing like file structuring for your videos. I'll do another video probably talking about how to properly set up post haste because that's going to add too much time to this video here. So that's another application that I'd highly recommend you have installed. The other thing I want to talk about is some other prerequisites in terms of the hard drive configuration that I would recommend you have set up for this. Now uh, a lot of the, what I'm about to recommend comes from uh, re testing results from both my own experiences as well as various other reliable sources that um, have run lots of testing on what drive setup is best for Premiere Pro performance but in telling you what the drive setup here is I will also say things that you don't necessarily have to do so first I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you about how an ideal drive setup would be so over here I've got local disk C this is my boot SSD right anyway you would want an SSD for boot and your applications such as Adobe Premiere Pro, Post Haste, and Adobe Media Encoder, as well as obviously Windows being installed on here. So one SSD like you would normally have. Now, you'd also want a second SSD, preferably a larger size than this. I would recommend uh, at least a 256 gigabyte, probably a 500 gigabyte, but generally a 256 would be okay. And uh, this drive here is actually going to be for your media cache and your scratch disk. And uh, Adobe Premiere Pro just, uh, again, like I said, I did a lot of research on what the best drive configuration is so I'm not going to explain exactly why this is but uh, Adobe Premiere Pro works better and performs best when you have the media cache and scratch disk off of both of the OS drive and the uh, media file drive then you would also want another drive which is this one over here that I'm highlighting um, which you would want a like one terabyte SSD it would be my recommendation for this workflow but you could get away with a 500 gigabyte there as well and that's going to be where your media files are stored for Premiere Pro and Adobe Media Encoder to access and then also you would want some kind of archival storage like uh, this main storage area that I have set up here but of course archival storage is all up to you and how you do that now something you could get away with at the bare minimum is a singular SSD uh, that your OS, your applications, your scratch disk, your media files, and your media cache are all stored on. You'd probably want a at least a one terabyte SSD. You could maybe do a 500 gigabyte with this workflow, assuming you weren't working with footage that was too lengthy, and um, you could do it all on one 
drive that is totally possible but multiple drives is better if you can afford it uh, another possible setup would just be having your OS on one drive with all your applications as well and another SSD again preferably like 500 gigs to a terabyte for um, your media files your media cache and your scratch disk so the three drives performs best two drives is pretty solid I don't really recommend doing just one drive unless you absolutely have to but it will work with that you're just gonna experience slightly slower performance for this workflow so the uh, first thing that I would actually end up doing here would be creating a uh, structure with post haste now I have a structure already preset here so I'm not going to explain how to set the, all of that up but as you can see I have these folders with various subfolders that I can create with a name for the primary folder I'm just gonna call this test now you click create project and you go into the drive that you want to use. So in this case, I am putting it on the drive that I am considering my uh, my one terabyte media media storage drive, where I'd be putting the media files. This is where I'm going to put uh, some other things like uh, project files and stuff can go here too. Although I'll get a little bit more in depth on that a little bit later. But uh, basically, this is the drive I'm using here would be effectively your. Uh, uh, storage drive that you're using for your media files as well as like you know audio files all your media files and so I just click here and click OK it creates this wonderful structure for you and so I've got like audio with voice and music or I've got my footage with a roll and B roll that I can dump stuff into so the next thing I would go and do is I would go into my PC and I would go to where my test footage that I have set up is and I would cut that say this was a, another drive this is like your SD card or whatever from your camera right so you would want to take that footage and you want to put that where uh, where you have it stored in the post haste files so now that I'm back in that test directory that I made with post haste I'm just gonna go into footage and a roll and I'm just gonna paste this in here so this is a uh, we're pretending this is basically our t standard footage that we have raw from our camera you'll probably have more than just this in here uh, and of course the way I organize my file system could be different from the way you organize yours but the drive that we are on is your media file drive which is where everything is stored under the test directory that I had set up with post haste now as you can see I have Adobe Media Encoder open now and it's just a uh, blank canvas that I have set up here and uh, I have some presets that I'll be using but I'll explain to you what settings I am using for those presets in specific just know that you'll have to set them up manually for your own setup mine are just already set up alright so you're gonna wanna go ahead and add some stuff to the queue you can double click here you can control I you can click file and click import or you can click the plus whatever you wanna do now I navigated over to my directory, I've got my footage, my A-roll, this is the test footage that we're going to be using in Media Encoder 2 Transcode. I'll click open, then you want to go ahead and uh, click here or here, we're going to be changing the encoding settings. So as you can see, this is from my uh, cable custom cable sleeving guide part 2, which I'll go ahead and link in the uh, description as well as uh, just give you guys a little eye sill up there for this video. But this is the video that I'm going to be doing the, uh, the uh, footage on here. So you're going to want to go, uh, now this is the setup that I use, and this is the biggest, like really probably the most important part to getting this to work the way you want it to work and to get the best performance, is using GoPro Cineform format for your footage. And that's what we're transcoding to because it's a GPU accelerated codec. And it is a uh, much, it's um, not as lossy as MP4, not that you can make the MP4 or H.264 footage higher quality by any means, but um, it is less compressed and it is GPU accelerated so you can get some really amazing timeline performance uh, out of this. So you're going to want to click here and you're going to want to click QuickTime because Cineform is technically a QuickTime format. So you switch over to QuickTime. Now again, I have a preset Cineform transcode here. Don't worry about the 720p, that's something I have set up different. So Cineform, Cineform transcode right there. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you exactly what my settings look like. All right, guys, so I'm capturing my cursor now. I apologize for that beginning section uh, not having my cursor in it. So this should make it a little bit easier for you guys to understand what I'm doing. So uh, again, we're going to go over the video settings here. And we have GoPro Cineform selected. I already showed you guys that. Oops, made that a little smaller. Let's make that a little bigger. There we go. All right, and then you got your basic video settings. Uh, as you can see, it's going to use your default resolution that you have set up. Uh, generally, by default, that's just what it's going to have matching the source. Uh, your quality, you can leave at 4 or you can increase, but it doesn't make a massive difference. Your frame rate, just leave that at whatever the original footage is, all that kind of stuff. Um, now, if you really want to go crazy, you can render in RGBA right there, 12-bit depth, but that's not really necessary. Yeah, YUV is going to work just fine. So that's the setting that I use. Uh, 
uh, this is going to take up more space and whatnot. And uh, rendering at maximum depth is also going to take up more space. So don't worry about any of that. And the advanced settings, you don't really need to worry about. The bitrate settings, you're not going to have to change. Now, I always do check use maximum render quality. You don't have to, but uh, I, you know, it increases the encode time a little bit as it says there. But that's just something that I generally check. Now, you're going to want to click the output name up here once you confirm that you're using your uh, GoPro Cineform, which I would recommend creating a preset on that once you change your settings. You can, ex uh, or you can save it as a preset and name it so that you can use it in the future. So then you click your output name here. So what we're going to be doing here is putting it on the media drive. Now, this is what I do because I delete the Cineform footage later because it is a massive file size. You can always re-render the Cineform footage if you need to. But um, So I, I always just put it right here. I don't create a separate directory for it because I don't store anything else just sitting in the uh, upper directory here. So that's where I would store all my Cineform footage. And uh, this is where obviously all your, pro or, uh, all your media files are as well. So it just kind of makes sense to have it all here. And so you click Save and now everything's set up so you just click OK and that adjusts the settings here over here the output file if you're doing more than one of these uh, footages at a time if you're doing more than one piece of footage that you're transcoding at a time you're gonna wanna select them all and select the output file as well as make sure that they're all on your preset or set up the way that I had mine set up there if you don't make a preset but once you're done with this uh, you just click the play button and it's going to go ahead and uh, start the queue and uh, do the transcode over to Cineform so I'll get back to you guys once that's done all right, everybody, I am back now, and the footage finished transcoding. I love this system. It transcodes in almost real time with 4K footage. Super awesome. But uh, anyway, yeah, so the transcoding is done. So once you're done with that, you actually don't need Media Encoder open anymore. So you can close it, minimize it, whatever you want to do. Now, the next thing you want to do is you'll want to load up Adobe Premiere Pro because obviously that's going to be uh, where you're doing your edits in. And then you have to do some setup on that. So I'm going to create a new, like, basically test project to uh, show you guys exactly my settings of how I set up the drive configuration and whatnot and what I do for my editing workflow. So on my drive over here, and again, this would be like a one terabyte SSD in my uh, test folder here. This is the one that I created for us to do everything in. Uh, this project files folder is where I would select the folder for the location right here, which is where the project files are going to be saved. If you want to get slightly better performance and you want to do the best possible thing, you want to put your project files on a separate drive from the media files so that you just have a drive for your media files. So you can put the project files on the same drive as the media cache and as the scratch disks. Now, with video rendering and playback, you want that to be set to GPU accelerated. If you have a dedicated GPU that you definitely want to use that Mercury playback, OpenCL is what's used on AMD GPUs, or CUDA-based is what's used on NVIDIA-based GPUs. Now, the rest of these you shouldn't have to mess with. If you do, you should already know what you're doing. Uh, then you can go over to Scratch Disks here, and this is where you have to actually change to a custom location. Each one here and this is kind of a pain in the butt to be completely honest to, to have to change them each time they don't seem to save from my uh looking into it but anyway this is what you want to do is you're just going to hit browse and you want to go to the drive that you are using the ssd that you're using for your scratch discs select folder and you just do that with each one and it will luckily go back to the default folder that you had set up uh for the first one so you can just click select and it will select that folder. Now you want to put it in a folder ideally. I'm just putting it on the drive. Now these are scratch disk files so you can technically delete them after the project is over. Alright, so you're just going to click OK on that and it's going to go ahead and set up the project for you, the default project layout and everything. Now what you want to do is you're going to want to go to Edit and Preferences and I always just go to General just to get the Preferences field loaded up. And then you're going to go down to Media Cache over here, and you're going to want to move the Media Cache also over to the drive that you had set up that your scratch disk is being recorded to. So you want to do that. You can always delete your uh, unused Media Cache from here if necessary. But once you're done with the project, that can also be deleted because you know it can regenerate the files that it generates while doing this. So anyway, that is the way you want the drives set up. And so now we have everything loaded up here, and I'll uh, go over over a few more things and now we have the footage over here in the timeline and you know we're set up to do exactly what we need to do and as you can see that scrubbing is really 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 high speed there now I'll go ahead and show you what H.264 format would look like so you get an idea of the performance improvements that you get from this alright so we're gonna load up this test footage right here alright so this is a dot mp4 instead of a dot mov like this one is over here 
drag that over onto the timeline. All right. So you see how smooth this bit is here. We'll go to the beginning so that we can kind of match it up. So as you can see, this footage is super smooth. I can scrub through it. Now watch when I get over to the H.264 footage. And keep in mind, again, this is on a 32 gigs of RAM, 16 core, 1950X uh, system along. And it's not running off an SSD. It's running off a hard drive. But still keep in mind, this is a powerful system. And boom. Look how laggy that is. Look how horrible that is. Now, you can play that back without dropping frames. Again, three frames dropped. During playback, that now, was just the beginning start my because of my hard drive so didn't respond quite as quick. So as you can see there, so now the first thing you want to do frames. So you can play it back, but it's the dragging it that is so hard to edit. You're trying to get to a specific point, a specific movement you did or something like that. There's no way you're going to be able to do that if you've got to edit with the H.264 footage. But back to the Cineform, and boom. GPU acceleration, as well as a uncompressed format, and all of a sudden you're capable of doing all kinds of super easy scrubbing. So everybody, that is my, uh, I know that was kind of a long video, but that's my video editing workflow and exactly what I do. Now again, that is not how-to video edit. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can do a video on how exactly I do my edits with some basic editing techniques in Premiere Pro to help you get started. But uh, this is just the workflow that I use for editing. So if you're interested in how I do that or if you're interested in trying it yourself, Cineform format is the best way that I've ever experienced editing. I've tried other codecs and the like, and I've never experienced something as nice as editing in Cineform. And and so that is what I recommend you use, and uh, three SSDs is the best layout, but please do have an SSD for this, and honestly, worst case scenario, just one boot drive that has all your files and everything on it as well, including your scratch disk, is totally fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind is you're going to get better performance as you go up to three SSDs. More than three, you don't see any performance advantage from that. So thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as leave your comments down below to let me know what you think of this here. So yeah, let me know if you want to see more like uh, screen capture type footage and stuff like this. Uh, it's you know it's something I could do more of if you guys are absolutely interested in it. And uh, don't forget to obviously check out the links in the video description down there. They'll go over our website in case you're interested in reading the tech news articles that we post there pretty consistently. Uh, and thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.